Welcome back to Chasing Grace. Last week we made the maiden voyage on our boat and sailed from Fort Lauderdale all the way up to Charleston, South Carolina to finish the renovation in my hometown. Today my friends Corey and Becca are coming by to help us with rewiring the boat. Oh, Corey is a marine electrician and he's a total boss. We're friends from middle school and he's a big part of the reason why we brought the boat to Charleston. He's the right guy for the job. A lot of the switches on there are working. And we can and anything that has become redundant, then we can just label it and change it. Yeah. Right. And that's fair. Or we can fucking start fresh. So Corey recently repaired the charge controllers on a lightning damaged boat. And the ones that came off are still kind of working. So the first thing we're doing is wiring in our solar panels so that we can charge our batteries and we won't have any more issues trying to start our engine in case we need to maneuver in an emergency. The wires were already run through the top by Jay's fabrication concepts and we just need to crawl down into the steering compartment and have them run into the main salon, hooked up into the charge controllers, and we should have charge coming through. It looks like we've got engine room air ducts here for the air vents. So we should be able to follow those all the way to the engine compartment. If we can get to the engine compartment, then we're in good shape. I see your fingers. I see your fingers. There's some wire. Yeah, you can probably stop already. No, no, no. I've got to get it un untangled. All right, Chase, there's like four more feet or so. Tell me how to help you, brother. Um, Good. Right now, I'm just about to strip and splice these pearls. Hero emerges. Oh, me? <laughs> <laughs> you know if there's any more of these lying around? Hey, that'll be enough to at least get us one solar panel today. I think the old owner had plans of rewiring the boat because he left behind a lot of electrical components. So we're going through all the old boxes and seeing what we can salvage, seeing what we can piece together to make a new system. Okay, so now we need to use this wall wire here and we're gonna run three pairs of wires from where the batteries are gonna live. Is everything clear from like around the windlass and stuff? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to make it run. Hey, 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 that's it. Cool. Woo! Those are the wires from the old switch. If they broke out at the bottom of the switch when you removed it, then yeah, if not, the problem was the wires splitting in half. They corroded in half, it looks like. Mm. Do you want to drop these wires down to me through the switch hole? That makes life a lot easier already. Kieran's going to be so stoked when he finds out the windlass is working. Everything in the Victron system ties into the brain. The brain has a touchscreen display that looks identical to this. Uh -huh. Corey and I talk about everything we're going to wire in. and We make sure that the 3000 watt inverter that we ordered is going to be sufficient to run and power everything. Next I get started installing some outlets for once the inverter's in. All right, today is a fun day. We're replacing the refrigerator, right? Right now we have the top loaders. The cool thing about top loaders is, and I guess the idea 30 years ago is, and, and still today, when you, when you have a top loader, right, and you open it, the air doesn't escape as much. But screw that, because it's impossible to organize anything. Everything just piles in on top of each other, and then when you have to take out one thing, it, be, it just becomes a mess. Not to mention, they don't work. We have some compressors down here. Nope, not there. We have some compressors here. And they've been jimmy rigged by our lovely mechanic. And <laughs> the fridge now only works as a freezer because I think what he's done is used both of them for one. 
and the freezer doesn't work at all. So basically, we don't have any cold refrigerated food, which hasn't been too much of a problem because we haven't had power. But now that we're working on the electrical system, it's time to replace the fridge. So from West Marine, that big massive shopping spree that we did, we have a brand new front loading fridge freezer combo, and it's gonna change life because it has shelves, and we're trying to figure out how to put it in. It's gonna be front loading, it's gonna go here somewhere and we're probably gonna have extra space for some storage so we're thinking through that right now and we have to raise the countertop because it's taller than this one which is okay with me because this countertop is busted it's just i mean look look at that that's, that's no bueno so let's do it bro boom I don't think you need to worry about how uh, we're going to get the new refrigerator here. I think you need to worry more about how we're going to get this one the fuck out of here. We're going to have to cut it all apart because it was put in here and the fucking boat was built around it. Are you trying to separate from the side? Yeah. better cut this because we're going to have to replace it anyway. That way we can take it out in two pieces and we don't have to worry about scratching or something. Nice. Nice. Radical. Trying to remove the fridge, we realized that there is a bottom to this electrical cabinet and some of the negative bus bars are screwed to it. So we start unplugging things and relocating them. This must be the control for the refrigerator. Okay, because that's where that orange wire that comes up through here, that goes down through here and comes over, goes into. So I don't know what's hot and what's not. Freon can be very deadly if it gets in your lungs. So it's a good thing I can cut them. Yeah. But we're going to cut them now still. We're still going to cut them. We're just going to be careful. Okay? But so the thing is, Freon... It sinks. Yeah. And so if it gets in your lungs... It can't get out. It can't get out. Yeah, they're going through the floor is the problem, Dad. So you got to try to pull them out. Crazy how much smaller of a footprint this new one takes. I don't get me wrong. We could store way more food in these. But it's just such a fucking pain without shelves. Yeah. It also doesn't work. Yeah, that's the big key. <laughs> Are we all disconnected? Actually, I, I gotta see. I gotta pull it out a little bit more to be able to see everything. So we're getting this all out today, and that's always fun. So once we have all the Freon lines and the wires cut from the fridge, we have to slice this whole fridge in half just to be able to get it out of the boat. I honestly think it was in here before they put the boat together. It, it just does not fit through the companionway. Kind of
maybe the course of action is put the fridge in so that we can have refrigerated food for the next week. We just fucking wire in that DC and we can, before we put it in, we can go ahead and put an outlet over there. I'm just letting you drift in real slow. No, you need to air that guy Huh? You need to air that guy out. It's squishy. It's so squishy. All right, here. Uh. You okay? Oh, I love that you appeared. You okay? You're back. Were you on the other side of it the whole time or he, you ran around? He was in the, and then he came through. Into the truck. Oh, thank you. Are you okay? I just thought your back was going to break in half. Okay. Getting the new fridge through the companionway was hell. And we had to remove the stairs and my girlfriend had to put the camera down and help us out. So we all had to have a little celebratory hug when we finally got it in. It was it was a mission. I can't, yeah. imagine, I can't imagine doing this shit myself. Um. So the fridge is looking perfect. All we have to do now is cut the old panel out to go around the fridge on the front side, lift it, and then we need to cut a new countertop, which we're gonna finish with Total Boat paint and epoxy to give our countertops a brand new look. The next thing we work on is our sump pump for our showers. I think that these have been disconnected and have not been running, so they're clogged, but we haven't really noticed because it's been so cold that we haven't even been showering, to be honest. Look at that disgustingness. Let's try to pour water down there. Are the towels? The whole thing. During all the craziness of trying to finish this renovation, I need to soak up some time with my family while I'm here in Charleston since I'm about to leave for about a six or seven year journey. So my sister Faith stops by with her cute little family and it's so great to see her. And then my sister Josie stops by, she's a circus performer by the way, to help us redo the stairs. We're tearing into the 30 year old padding and the non-skid off of the steps revarnishing all the wood, and my lovely girlfriend is also creating a collage as a sort of backdrop behind the stairs using some old charts that were left behind on the boat. And we're going to cover all of that with Total Boat Epoxy. Kieran, how do you feel about sanding? Best part of my day. Really? Like, how do you feel about varnishing? The best job you've given me so far. <laughs> so I had this in a total boat cup, hardware. Special lesson for you and for me don't use thinner. Clean your paintbrushes and a red solo cup because it eats the cup. So we were going to try to re-varnish the steps, but the wood filler that we used to patch all the damage just isn't taking color. It's not taking stain very well. So we're pivoting and we're going to paint the stairs and cover them with epoxy. We're hooking up new water heater. Ours was probably original to the boat, so 30 years old, and it shit the bed. So putting this new six gallon 
tanked water heater in because we're in Charleston and it's cold as hell and none of us are showering so we're very stinky. Um, it's like 600 bucks but worth every penny I guess. I'm really happy with how we're hooking it up. All the access points for the water inlets and outlets were on this side before which you know there's wood that sits around here really tight. I'm not going to do it but wood sits basically right here so the pressure release valve on the old one was just stuck and that's super dangerous because these things can explode without the pressure release valve and there was no way to access it so what I've done is I've cut a hole so right now I'm hooking up the coolant so basically the antifreeze from the engine that's used to cool down the engine comes out really hot and it's going to run through this water heater so anytime we're running the engine we'll use that to heat up the water that's in this tank uh, instead of the, ele the electricity in our battery bank. So that's what I'm hooking up here. And then you have one here to drain it. And then this is our pressure release valve like I was talking about. And then you have hot water coming out, I got a hook up, and cold water coming in. So, yeah, not too bad. Pretty simple stuff, because it was all wired and done. But are you excited for some hot water? Absolutely, can't wait. Especially for washing dishes, not just for showers. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching Chasing Grace this week. We are loving making these videos. We are loving getting them out every week to you guys. We have a couple more weeks of DIY renovation content on the boat. And then we are heading to the Bahamas. We have some travel videos coming your way. We have some sailing videos coming your way. Awesome stuff. Please, 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 if you think we deserve it, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you to the patrons for your support. Share this video with your second cousin. Tell them I said hello. Show your dog. Have a great day. God bless you. See you next week, guys. Hey, super secret camera woman, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I know how to surround myself with good people.